Hi and welcome. I am your host for the Owen Sound River District podcast, Vivica Gravel, Community Development Coordinator for the City of Owen Sound and the River District. I am sitting here today with uh, Kathy Dentant and Shauna Katz from Riverside Yarns. Hi and welcome. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thanks for coming us. Yeah, no, thanks for coming in. Um, I think we we just want to share with the community everything that you guys have going on and uh, uh, just talk about the, the different kinds of uh, materials and things that you have in your, your store and, you know, why and how Riverside Yarns has been such a, a staple in the community for so many years. So, um, it, Kathy, if you can just do kind of a bit of an introduction about um, Riverside Yarns, how you came to be, you know, there and all those kinds of things, that would be great. Sure. So the store, the business actually exists, um, well, it's been around for well over 10 years. It was founded by Colleen Rako. Okay. She was the first owner. She had uh, a little store on 10th Street. She moved it over to our present location. And um, we are the third owners we bought the store. When I say we, I'm talking about myself and a f- childhood friend of mine, Josette okay. de Brower. We um, decided to buy the store in uh, July of 2019, just before COVID. Okay. Yeah. So we had our third uh, anniversary just recently. Happy we, anniversary. Thank you. Shauna came on board, um, let's see, two, year, two Th- years yeah, ago. It's yeah, it's been two years it's just two recently. Years, yeah. And um, so Josette doesn't live here. Josette lives in uh, Blenheim, Ontario. Okay. And so she's um, she's a partner, but she's a distant partner. Sure. Uh, geographically, and um, Shauna's kind of the our store consultant, who really is the right hand, my right hand person, kind of. And yep. um, she helps <laughs> Josette and I run the business. That's so, amazing. Yeah. That's. A, I, um, I mean, I'm learning. So many new things from from all these uh, interviews and things like that because I I didn't realize that there was another person involved. Yeah, there is. Um, we just don't see much. Well, I mean, she used to come up regularly sure. before COVID, and then COVID hit, and then you know that all changed. So yeah. the way in which Josette's involved has been very. You know, she does um, Zooms with our our customers. She offers help over Zoom. Okay. She, we always consult her about, you know, when I'm buying, I talk to her. Like, she's very present, but not present. Well, you'll you know? have to let me yeah. know the next time that she's up yeah. so I can come in and meet her. Yes, that'd be I great. I would love that. Yeah. I would yeah. love that. And, of course, uh, Shauna, I've seen you in the store countless times. Yes. Uh, you're, you're always there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know what's going on. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the store itself and what you have on the shelves? Uh, we have a whole variety. We like being able to offer things at different price points and different fiber content so that there's a option for anybody. And we pride ourselves on being able to help people find a pattern, find the yarn, make sure they have the skills they need because we also offer classes. Um, so even if they're beginners or if they're really experienced, we can help them find what they're looking for. Yeah, no, absolutely. And for those of you who, who don't know, Riverside Yarns is full of yarn. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yarn, yarn knitting notions. stuff, uh, yeah. crocheting hooks crocheting. and all the accoutrement that might come along with that. Um, you have got little kits to do mm-hmm. things and yeah. you offer... On occasion, you'll sell the patterns that you guys have created and all those mm-hmm. kinds of things, which is yeah, stunning. Yeah, we, we support also um, punch needle. So that's another okay. another fiber art that people are really enjoying doing now. And we've brought in some uh, embroidery kits with um, yarn. So yarn, uh, lace weight yarn used as uh, to do embroidery, which is really fun. And, w- and felters, we, okay. we, we have... Um, we have uh, roving, which is just raw wool um, okay. that people use to felt with, and we we have the needles and spinning, and spinning. People can spin uh, not on a bike where this is not, not, no. <laughs> yeah, not no, exercise, is, no. right? Okay, <laughs> what, well, what is spinning? Uh, like a spinning wheel or a drop spindle, you know, like the uh, Rumpelstiltskin yes. story, that kind of spinning wheel. Some people have those at home, except modern. Okay. Um, GB Arts is actually doing a course we're taking in September to learn more about them. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. Because I've never spun. We, we both took a drop spindle from Audrey Armstrong, who's a master okay. spinner. Like, Own Sound has so many skilled, so many. talented yeah. people. 
So Audrey Armstrong gave both of us a class. I mean, we, we, did, we took a class at GB Arts again mm-hmm. in Drop Spindle, and we carry them, and we have a local uh, woodworker in Hanover who makes gorgeous drop spindles, and we sell those at the store. Interesting. We sell a lot of local products, yeah. actually. One of our kind of, the, one of the things that we really try to do is have local local products as much as possible. We so should we get Intersections wool. Wood um, Collaborative to do a drop spinning building well, he, he course. Works, he works with them, yeah, actually. Oh, of course they yeah. do. <laughs> of course yeah, they Peter do. Peter Fabricius, uh, that's his name, Peter okay. Fabricius. And he actually does work with the, with with the cooperative. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's so. And fun. then we have Gary Fleischauer. I don't want. I want to mention Gary too because Gary's a woodworker in Hanover too, and he does shawl pins for us and, and buttons. buttons. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and we have incredible. we have wool from Meaford Wool. We have wool from Woolies in the Country, a farm outside of Chatsworth. Like, right. So these are coming amazing. from mm-hmm. from local. Yep. Sheep yep. And, yep. and things like that. So that's and alpacas. Okay. Yeah. So there's alpaca. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Ah, where does wool come from? So there's a lot of different fibers you could use. So you can get different types of sheep. Just don't forget that there's different types of sheep, right. like a Merino versus a Shetland. Um, Romney. Romney, yeah. So, so these are breeds of sheep versus yes. just treatments of the wool. Right. right. Okay. So the fiber itself is slightly different depending okay. on the type of sheep. But then you could also get from um, things like alpaca, um, but also yak. We have Oh, Okay. We have some, yak is really light and warm. Musk ox is another one. Um, and you can go also with plant fibers like nettle, mm-hmm. like those, like that prickly mm-hmm. stuff. Um, it gets turned into um, fibers. And it's no longer prickly. We usually mix it with something. Okay. 100% <laughs> nettle would be prickly. <laughs> yeah, okay, but it's, okay, okay. It's much softer. Or like linen, which is made from hemp or flax. Sure. Uh, cotton, obviously. So there's... Lots of options in this. And then, of course, there's man-made products like nylon and, and acrylic and, and, acrylic and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you you ladies are definitely like, I don't know, some sort of wool and yarn gurus. Because uh, honestly, I had no idea that, I just assumed it came from like sheep. <laughs> well, we had to learn a lot. I did. <laughs> when I go, yeah. To learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just pictured like those white sheep that you see that get sheared and that's cool and that's where wool comes from and I'm uh, maybe a little bit ignorant. Oh, about no. Wool. There are so many. There's silk, silk blends. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Silk. silk and cotton, silk and wool, silk and alpaca. And so- some of these come from hyper local yes. farms. Yeah. Yes. That's incredible. I mean, talk about sustainability and yeah. all of those kinds of things. Plus, they're they're naturally reoccurring fibers yes. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So they're warm. They're water resistant a lot of the times. Yes, too. and also antibacterial or antimicrobial. A really? lot of the natural fibers. Mm-hmm. Like I made a soap saver out of woolies in the country yarn, and it's naturally antimicrobial. So it's not going to grow mold or get fungus all over it or Interesting. anything. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's so, why they're great for socks. Good to know. Uh, okay, so for our listeners, for me again as well, and for the people who are watching, what kind of wool was that? There's just, no, like wool. Just wool in general. Like, yeah, the, the animal fibers. Okay. The animal fibers. Are right. antimicrobial. Yeah. In some, general. Some more than other. Merino is even more so. Okay. Um, mohair also. That comes from goats. Yeah. Okay. Like mohair. Um, so, and they also have just plain regular wool is also, um, it, you know, it keeps you really warm even when wet. Yes. So right. like it's people. not waterproof, but it will, it will, you can retain warmth even when your hands yeah. are wet. So that's why, whereas, you know, that a pair of wool and mittens, um, where like it, it might be a lot wool. more, it more yes. it's more trouble to, cause you can't put it in the dryer. If you sure. put it in the dryer, it's going to felt and it, you're going to ruin them, but they are actually warmer. Than, than something from say acrylic, right? Mm. So, but acrylic, of course, has that wonderful quality too that you can throw it in the dryer and it won't get destroyed. So, sure, you know, you have to kind of when you come into the store, you have to we have to always ask everybody what what do you what do you who are you making this for? What's your dream project? What do you want to do sure. with it? Is it going to go in the dryer? Do you yeah. know how it's going to be cared for? You know, it's quite yeah, it's very involved. Well, there's a <laughs> lot. Oh yeah. my goodness, I had no idea. Yeah. And, and don't always count those um, wool items that you've put in the, the dryer that have become felted. 
as a mistake because uh, one of my friends accidentally threw a, a baby hat in the dryer and it is now the cutest tiny little felt hat. Yeah. So, <laughs> like for an elf on the shelf. Uh, yeah, right. or like a dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so not always a, a not bad always mistake. A mistake. No, yeah. we, we have actually samples in the store where we it's been done on purpose. Like okay. we have slippers and we have a bag that were felted on purpose. So you make them out of wool that is not coated with superwash so that it will felt Okay. You make it bigger than you want it to be because it will shrink. Quite a bit, yeah. And then you end up with a, a product that is felted, so it's very sturdy. Okay. Um, it's very warm. Very warm. Uh, water like repellent. Dense. dense, but mm. comfortable. Yeah. Interesting. Like felted mitts are super, yeah. super warm. And yeah. we can learn all about this and what materials and purchase all of these things right from your storefront here in the River District. Yes, we um, were planning, we, we started giving in-person classes again last spring. We did two sessions and then we, we stopped for the summer, but in the sure. fall we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring out a, um, a line of, a line, a series of classes again. Okay. We also have a table in the store and this is something we really wanna emphasize that everybody is welcome to come and sit at that table. Anytime the store is open, you can come in and sit and knit and crochet, do whatever you want. We will help whenever we're not okay. with customers. We will the help. best we can. Sure, yeah. sure, of course, yeah. of course. And um, uh, and then also in the fall, we're planning to stay open late. Um, this is my, this is the plan now, anyway. So we're, we're hoping that you know have plans. <laughs> stay of all tuned. Plans <laughs> yeah. have changed, but our plan now is to stay open late on Thursdays, and uh, that's not going to be a busy night for custom so we would just have folding chairs out everywhere and anybody could come in and sit in it so that would be our yeah. okay sorry that would be our craft night on, oh, that's on so thursdays cool. in the fall. Yeah. yeah so, so i'm a, if i'm a, a you know a, a, a novice at crocheting or knitting or yep. any of those kinds of things and i just need somebody to hold my hand a little bit i can come I can in come. Mm -hmm. Sit down, and mm -hmm. you will help me wipe my tears, but not Absolutely. with wool because it'll shrink. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> just don't put it in the dryer. Don't put it in the yeah. dryer. <laughs> that's fair. That's yeah. fair. No, that's so yeah. great. And of course, um, as, as we learned through the pandemic, is that people started picking up these these skills again. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my mother taught me to knit. Nothing of any sort of consequence, but when I was quite young and we knitted a few projects together and she used to knit my Barbie's clothes, mm -hmm. um, which is so fine and so particular. It's something I will never achieve, but it was so <laughs> glorious. My, my Barbie's had the most glorious winter attire. Um, but then you just, none of my friends knew how. Right. And they weren't interested in, in knitting or crocheting or anything. And now almost every single person I know knits crochets, felts, mm. does something to that effect. Yeah. And it's so lovely that we can come and we can, you know, utilize your store for all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, talk a bit about the, the tools that you have on hand um, that you offer. And in addition to just the, not just, but in addition to the yarn, um, what kind of tools do you have uh, for the novice to the experienced and those kinds of things? Well, one of the things we really pride ourselves on is having a full range of needle and hook sizes. Okay. Um, you'd be surprised how many yarn shops don't have every size. Because we've had customers comment to us more than once. I'm so glad you have this size. I've been looking everywhere. And you would need different size needles for? Different size yarn. Okay. Good so you know. know how you mentioned like the Barbie clothes were made really fine? Yes. Right? So whereas you could get like a really chunky cowl or scarf. Right. Right? So you would use different size needles because the yarn itself is a different okay. size. Good to know. Good to know. Um, so, so yeah, we have... Sizing depends on size. Of the si like if you, know, if you use needles that are too large and you, and you haven't calculated carefully how many stitches you're getting to four inches right then your sweater will be way too big yes so interesting I, I yes i learned the hard way about gauge that's the thing <laughs> yeah. is i made mittens and i i matched the yarn and i matched the hook size but i didn't make sure they were right for the pattern so i came up with these beautiful mittens but they didn't fit me they fit a three-year-old oh well <laughs> so i had to give them away like, like yeah. the belted hat yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really cute yeah so we offer needles of all sizes hooks of all sizes um all sorts of little notions so like 
measuring tapes or uh, things to measure your gauge, like Athia mentioned, the four inch gauge. Mm -hmm. um, stitch markers. Stitch markers, stitch darning holders. Needles. Yes, darning eggs and mushrooms made by uh, Peter Fabricius that we mentioned earlier. Because cool. mm -hmm. a lot of people are picking up the like mending, darning. Yeah. Um, you know, or visible mending. And so this really, those products really help make that easier. Okay. Um, Darning needles. Yeah, the drop spindles. The drop spindles. Right. Um, and some embroidery hoops. Mm -hmm. um, wool oh. winders and swifts, mm -hmm. which you might need. If So yarn comes in different shapes. Not everyone realizes this. So okay. you can get it in a like your traditional ball, which is kind of slightly oblong. Or you can get a flattened ball, which is looks a little a bit donut. more like a donut. Yeah. Um, then you can get, it's funny because a skein is described in two different ways. A skein could be sort of like a squished oblong where you pull it still from the center right or a skein can be um where it's a big circle and then it's been twisted okay so if it's that second skein where it's been twisted you can't just grab it from the middle and start going it'll get all, all tangled up you have to put it you have to the old-fashioned way would be to have one person sit there with your hands up holding the yarn. Yes, I've had to do that. Yeah, and then the other person puts it into a ball. Yeah. If you're by yourself, you can use a swift and a... Winder. Winder, thank you. Um, to do that, to help you do that on your own rather than having mm. somebody else there holding the yarn. I'm so. pretty sure that's why my mother just had kids. Right. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember kids are very fondly useful for that. <laughs> holding the yarn or wrapping the yarn and she Into would be holding ball. the yarn and yes. it, was, it was fine. Mm. Now, we have come to the end of our time already. Oh, my. I know. Uh, you've got me so excited to start all of these projects and come in and sit with you and learn so much more about wool and yarn and the differences and all of those kinds of things we'll have to have you back at some point because i feel like we've just got like an hour and a half worth of <laughs> content on uh these you know um crafts but um really quickly uh how can we get in touch with you what are your socials and what are your websites and all those kinds of things okay so the website is www.riversideyarns.ca we're so on cool. in yeah we're on Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook as Riverside Yarns. Riverside Yarns. Okay. Um, and we're at nine twenty eight Second Ave East. Great. And the phone number five one nine three seven one four three one one. Awesome. And you can message us on Facebook and Instagram and, and email through email. the web store. Yeah, lots of emails through the web store. We can do that. And wow. we um, we're open Tuesday to Friday, 11 to 5, and Saturday, 10 to 4. And then we're planning the extended hours on Thursday in the fall. Probably, awesome. Probably mid-September when that'll start. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I think this has gone the most quick out of anybody. <laughs> I've learned so much, and I'm so excited now. And you have this wonderful energy oh, about... You. Knitting and crocheting it's and all of these stuff well, for us. We love it. it that's yeah. so great. It's I love that. And I think the viewers and the listeners will really get excited about it's it. It's the too. best thing in the world, I have to say. Yeah. Just anybody yeah. who wants to start, it's really worth it. It's that's so awesome. much fun. That's yeah. awesome. All right. Mm. Well, coming to you from the Owen Sound River District podcast, I am your host, Vivica Gravel, Community Development Coordinator for the City of Owen Sound and the River District. You can always reach us at our website, owensoundriverdistrict.ca, and of course on our socials at, at River District OS. Thank you again so much for joining me today. I've had a lot of fun. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for having us. We'll see you later. Bye.